All right, welcome back, Kit Fox family. We are continuing today the build of our horizontal stabilizer for our Kit Fox Series 7. Yep. What do you have in your hands there, Ben? A piece of UMHW plastic. And where could that possibly go? Well, I'm guessing in the horizontal stabilizer area. <laughs> so we're going to use this, this plastic blocky thingy. This actually goes in these square tabs at the front of the horizontal. And what that does is guide that material, uh, will guide the horizontal as it goes up and down on the fuselage. Follow me over here. This tube here at the front is a uh, half inch square tube and the horizontal will actually uh, encompass this and you want to get a nice fit. Because our stabilizer is trimmable, it needs to glide on there. You can't just say, oh, it's a half inch tube and we're going to measure it a half inch. It really should be drilled on the fuselage because powder coat thickness and uh, just different tolerances uh, can, can make a difference in how that fits. So we're going to start by pre-drilling a couple of holes in the tops. So if you look in your manual, you'll see that there's four screws that go through this block and hold it in place. Trying to, to blindly drill and match all four of those holes from the top would be very, very difficult. So we're only going to pre-drill one side. Uh, I usually do the top side because we're going to be drilling down uh, from the top. So if we flip this over, we're going to pre-drill four holes in here. We'll deburr those and we're going to carefully inspect this square tubing because we actually have a little tiny burr right there on the edge. So if that's the case, grab a file and just knock that burr down. All right, so going to page 13, check local listings because the manual may change between the time of this video and your building. But uh, we are going to drill four holes. The manual calls for a number 34. That will be the final hole size. We'll come back and drill that out later, but we're going to use only 40s to begin with so that we can use our long 40 to go down from the top of the fuselage and through the blocks all together. So uh, we get busy with that. All right, so we're ready to drill the four holes that secure the slider blocks in place. Follow the manual as far as the dimensions, but uh, we'll watch Heather do this real quick. Okay. Do you know what this is? Uh, yeah, it's a hole starter. That is not a hole starter. It's actually a center punch. It's a hole starter. <laughs> What's the purpose of the hole starter? It's to make an indentation where you want the hole to be. It does. It, and it, it helps the drill bit when you put it in there, it secures it in that spot. So when you start to drill, it keeps exactly. it in place. Exactly. So this is a good tool to have around because it keeps that bit, especially a small drill bit, keeps that from wandering around. So in that case, we're whenever she's done marking here. I remarked so it would be good. In that case, we're gonna go through and we're gonna just do a quick little tink and that way our drill bit doesn't wander as we uh, pre-drill that home. Perfect. Okay. You wanna give that a shot? Sure, please take. Of course. Thank you, assistant. <laughs> okay, how do you work this thing? All right. This looks complicated. Let's give it a try. All you're going to do is line up the crosshairs of your mark there. Ah. And you can do it once or twice, but just as long as you have a little indentation. Most of the time, you're actually just hitting the powder coat, maybe just a little bit into the metal, but it's just enough to keep from that, uh, that bit wandering. There we go. That's better. Boom. All right, we got a little lube on our number 40 drill bit. Even though the manual says 34, we're going 40, okay? We're drilling steel, so we're gonna go just a little bit slower RPM, a little bit of pressure. Okay, you can kind of see the ribbons coming off there. That's a perfect drill, means we got a sharp drill and we have the right feed and speed rate, so. Okay. You can also, when, you, when the drill is about to bust through the, the other side of the steel, you can actually hear a little bit of an RPM change. You can kind of hear the drill kind of start unloading just a little bit. At that point, you can back off on your pressure and it's gonna just pop through. You really, ideally, you don't want to hit the other side. It's hard on drills. Hear it? Oh, just a, ever so slightly changing an RPM.
I heard it. Yeah, you can hear it just kind of unload a little bit, okay? We'll let you give it a shot. Let's put just a little more wax on there. Good. Can't see. <laughs> Too much wax. Okay, go with each Yeah, okay. That RPM's working great. Just let the drill do the work. Oh, she found the middle RPM. <laughs> That's me changing it. <laughs> okay, so take your hand off here, put it on top of the drill. Give you a little more control of pressure and everything else. Sometimes you can have a little piece of steel on the end that screws with you. It was there. That was it. You were almost through. <laughs> Isn't that just how it goes? Here, I'll do this one. Good. All right, let's deburr those. Okay, my love. Now we're going to fit the blocks. Okay. Okay, so you can see the block is oversized yeah. and it's not going to fit in there. So it looks like maybe we need to take just about a sixteenth off of that. Okay. And we're going to want this to extend in and still have a little bit hanging over here. So in reality, we could probably just split that block right in half. A sixteenth or so off of one side and we'll go up to that line instead of taking that line. And then, uh, yeah, just split that block right in half. So let's go to the bandsaw. Let's do it. All right, so a little detour to the, uh, the disc sander first. We want to take just about a sixteenth off of this, and the blade on the bandsaw is not going to do that real well. So uh, we'll sand this off on the disc sander. All right, to the bandsaw. If I'm ever missing, just know that Heather probably cut me up on a bandsaw. Let's go to the disc sander. Make it look so nice. So I don't know if you were counting, but I think I just made about 150 trips between the disc sander and the horizontal here, getting these fit, but they fit really, really, really well. So the idea is to get these to just push in there ever so smooth. And I just push them right to the very edge of the steel tube. So would you say they're snug? They're snug. They're, they're not going to go anywhere. Okay. Um, but we're not having to force them or clamp them in place either. We're going to actually get this thing mounted on the airplane. And then we can final fit these and do a match drill through the blocks and get our hardware installed. Some things I'm anticipating as I'm putting this up. If this main steel bushing that's welded to the, uh, the horizontal if that's a little too wide, we may have to grind that down to get it to fit in the fuselage. Normally it's really close. If the powder coat's real thick or real fat through there, that could create some issues too. So those are things I'm thinking about and I'm prepared for as we go to move this in. Okay. If you can pick that up for us, feed yep. it through, we'll get this mounted in the fuselage. This is a, this is a case where two people's handy, but you could do this by yourself. So we're going to make sure that this front ensemble is straddling that square tube there and that's going to allow us to insert this hinge point in the back here. So that went in pretty nicely. I am going to use here the tapered bolt. You heard me talk about this a little bit earlier. I've taken and, and kind of given this a little bullet right. at, the, at the nose. So that's going to help keep from destroying my threads, I'm trying to smack that through. So it's a fitting piece, not, not a final assembly That is piece. correct. It's a, it's a sacrificial bolt. <laughs> okay. All right. So there, I've got a position. Now, just for this rigging purpose, I could actually leave this in here, and that would do everything we need it to do uh, as far as getting this aligned. Next, we're going to use a little clamp to hold this guy up. So okay. my arms don't get tired. Your arms don't get tired. But I do want to caution everybody... At this point, we don't have the horizontal struts in place. So that means you got to be real careful not to let this wobble, not to smack it, not to let it, you know, teeter and totter. You just want to keep it fairly stable right now. 
what we're going to do is position these so you can see we've got some some play here but i want to bring these to where we have an even reveal and i don't want to be too tight if i get too tight uh, it could potentially bind the, the trim motor So I'm looking for just a little bit of that UHMW plastic to extend just beyond the steel. And if I pull this, we should get travel all the way through. And I'm, I'm feeling that touch That's all binding. the way through. It's not binding anywhere. Okay. And later, in final assembly, we're actually going to go through and wax that. So huh. make it real smooth. Okay. It's a good glide. So I like that. Uh, I like that fit up. Let me grab the long 40 drill, and we'll get busy uh, locking this in. Earlier in the segment, you heard me talk about using a, a 40 drill bit to pilot these holes, and the reason is we want to be able to use the pilot holes we drilled, and now we want to match that with this number 40 drill. This is a long 40. Nice part about, especially the 40 bits, but the long bits, they they'll bend and they'll they'll move, so you can access things quite easily without. Uh, permanently bending the bit, which is pretty unusual for a drill bit. But we're going to come in here and we'll set this up with the drill to where we're drilling straight down. We'll drill through the plastic and then ultimately put our final hole through the steel. And then we can take this off, match up our number 34 drill at that point, and get our final hole size for our 440 hardware. Uh, but we can do that off the airplane instead of trying to get in here. It's, it's really difficult to get in here with even a 90 degree drill and make this all work. Okay, hole number one, done. I'm actually gonna change, instead of that clamp, I'm gonna use a grip clamp instead of a spring clamp. All right, drilling is pretty straightforward. We're gonna let Heather give it a shot. Okay. Yeah, boy. You should see the plastic coming out. Faster. There we go. A little more pressure. So you're listening for that tone to change, remember? And we're starting to see little steel pieces, so you know you're making progress. There you go. Okay, go ahead and run it. Pull it out. Beautiful. Okay, do the back hole. Almost speed. Beautiful job, Ed. Nicely done. Okay, so now we can pull this back to the sawhorse as we go. We could have moved this around while taking it off the airplane. So I am going to, and I can see that it's off. So if you want to line it up visually, that's fine. Okay, so that's helping line that up where we had it. Okay, we have our number 34 all chucked up. Heather just shared something <laughs> with me that I have asked her to share. Yeah. So as I was drilling these, um, that piece in there, I realized that I was just really grateful that it went well and that I didn't mess it up. <laughs> and I'm thinking everybody probably feels that way. You don't want to mess things up on your airplane, right? Yep. yep. In this case, let's say she had. Worst case scenario, she, you order a new set of blocks, we send them out to you, you redrill them. It, it's just really that simple. So. Yeah. You know, don't get too hung up on stuff. Don't be afraid to, to go to the next step and, and do things. Um, hopefully these videos will be helpful to you and, and we'll just keep rolling with them. Okay, let's get to drilling. Okay, here we go. Okay, as long as you're not pushing things out of place, 
that drill is just going to flow right down inside there and follow the line all the way to that bottom set of holes. So now these have a really good tight fit. These aren't going to move. Worst case scenario, if you had this too tight, you can file this, you could sand this away. If you were too tight and it wasn't fitting on your square tube. That's one step closer to us flying our airplane. So let's keep going. <laughs> 